In sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like quarterback, F1 Drive to Survive, Untold, and many more now on Netflix. Hello and welcome to a new podcast, The Paddock and the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Paddock and the Pavilion. This weekend, we're going to focus on the Melbourne Cup, the race that stops a nation. Our guest today is Vicky Sewell, a bookkeeper and racing fan who has her own former Melbourne Cup horse, who she rides each week around the North Norfolk countryside. I hope you enjoy the show. Don't forget you can download the show on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify or Stitcher. Give us a rating and let us know what you think of the show so far. Welcome to the Paddock and the Pavilion, Vicky. Oh, thank you very much for having me on. Thank you. Well, it, well it's good to talk to you again. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting you uh, a few weeks ago on the Gallops at Newmarket uh, when I found out that you've got a Melbourne Cup horse in Norfolk. Who is this horse? His name is Royal Empire and he ran in the 2013 Melbourne Cup and yes. um, came 14th, I think. Yeah, I've been I've been checking up like you probably have about all the details about him. He came 14th of 24 in the 2013 race. And this Definitely. is the race, the race this year that's going to be run on Tuesday, the 3rd of November. Uh, the race that stops a nation. Before we talk much about Royal Empire, let us uh, find out a bit about yourself. Well, um, I was born in Devon and my parents emigrated to Australia in 1973. We always had sort of thoroughbreds and ex racehorses. Uh, for a little while in my what, late teens, I worked for Gary Hanlon, who was the son of George Hanlon, who had three Melbourne Cup winners. Oh, um, so you've got a connection in... already. You've already got a connection yeah, with the right. Melbourne Cup, yeah. Yeah, he had two in the 70s, I think, and one in the 80s. Um, I think Black, was it Black Knight was the last one, 1984-ish. And, um, yeah, I've just loved thoroughbreds, loved riding them and just love everything about them. And uh, so, yeah, when the chance came up to get one over here, I had uh, got some grazing and, yeah, contacted Godolphin and got hold of the Royal Empire. <laughs> just going back a bit, what, what part of Australia were you Melbourne as well? Uh, we were to, Well, we actually lived on the Bellerin Peninsula, which is a bit... Um, it's south of Geelong, and Gary Hanlon chained at um, Geelong Racetrack. He had a stables uh, just on the or just off the racecourse. So I used to go in there at the weekends and um, sort of muck out and uh, saddle the horses up. And if there was a chance to go to the races, they were usually country races, sort of at Bendigo and Atuka and Pakenham. And I used to go and sort of lead the horses around the. Um, parade ring uh, and you know the jockeys used to get on and, and, and go off but yeah so I was involved to that extent with them on the actual racing side and sure. that lasted probably three or four years but as I say I've always had thoroughbreds just as hacks and um, did a bit of pony club with them and yeah just love them love them <laughs> so have you ever been to the Melbourne Cup yourself well once I can't say I particularly enjoyed it because the number of people there, you know, you don't actually really get to see the horses. But you know, it was a, certainly an experience, and I'm very glad I went. So, what year did you go to Flemington to watch the Melbourne Cup, Vicky? Um, it was 1986, the year at Talak one. And when did you move to this country then? Um, I came back. I in about 1994, I met my partner over here and then decided to stay. My mother was back here as well. So, yeah, came back and um, been here ever since. So how did you actually come to purchase Royal Empire? Um, I had the opportunity of some grazing about five minutes walk away from our house and decided, you know, that was the time to 
try and get another horse and went, sort of went on the internet and saw that Godolphin did a rehoming program contacted them via email just saying the sort of horse I wanted and what activities I wanted to participate in. They got back to me and said they had three that would suit me. I went down to Chippenham where they were at that stage. I'm not sure if they're still there. And Royal Empire was the first horse I rode. Um, He was ridden first by his normal work rider. Then I rode him in the school And then went out with her and um, sort of cantered him around the edge of a field and just, you know, loved him and didn't actually try the other two, decided he was the one I'd I'd have. And um, I think a couple of weeks later, got a trailer and brought him back here. And then you have them for three weeks, uh, sorry, for three months on a sort of trial period. And if you've got any any, uh, problems over that time, you can contact a dolphin or I assume send them back, but he was absolutely fine. And then um, Joe, it was at the time, came up and saw him, made sure he was happy and being well looked after. And then they signed them over to you. And I think, you know, I paid a hundred pounds and the passport transfer fee, and yeah, he was mine. What, <laughs> and I had him obviously. What year was that when you when you bought I, him? Uh, 2015. So his Melbourne Cup run was 2013, which was, I think, his last race. I think he had tendon trouble after that. So probably 2014, you know, they were seeing how far they could push him or whether it was worth putting him back into training again and decided against it and um, then put him up for rehoming in early 2015. And, of course, you're following some quite famous jockeys on him. He's been ridden by Frankie de Tori, uh, Sylvester de Souza, Kieran Fallon, and Karen McAvoy in the Melbourne Cup as well. Oh, that's right, yeah. No, it's fantastic. <laughs> I, you, you don't know all that when you apply for the horse. So um, I've ridden him, but he's just given a stable name. I think it was Mo in his case. So you don't know really unless you you know, very up with racing and can tell the, you know, tell what he was by what he looked like or tell which horse he was by the way he looked. I didn't know that that, that it was Royal Empire. I just thought, oh, well, it's a, it's a nice thoroughbred. You know, it's only after you've been there and you need the details to get the insurance and everything that you actually find out who the horse is and, and what it's done in the past. And after that three months, you don't hear again from Godolphin? Um, I did. I heard a couple of times. Um, once, I think, at the beginning of this year and once a couple of years ago, and they just make sure the horse is still well and you still have the horse. And, yet yeah, they keep a, a bit of an eye on you. <laughs> oh, that's good, good to know because, he, you know, he was a very good horse. So what can it, you tell me about? It is very good to know and it's very good of them to, to, you know, show interest in these horses and try and get them good homes and then make sure that they still have you know, a nice home three, four, five years later. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very good. Well, that is very important that they get rehomed and looked after. It, so what, what can you did, tell me about, yes. what can you tell me about his character? Um, it changes. <laughs> In sort of on a nice warm summer's day, you can, you know, you could crawl underneath him. On a windy autumn day, you know, you've got to be a, a bit careful. He can chuck himself around a bit and you know something that upsets him he behaves like a bit of a, a, a dragon he snorts and runs around but mm, sort of 95 times out of 100 he's absolutely perfect you know he's very good on the roads we get big trucks passing us empty bulk lorries that rattle past and he's as good as gold he really is you know and it, 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 you can't fault him very good horse so do you live in a quite a small village or town? Yes, quite a small village with lots of rural roads. And we do a lot of hacking out. I've got a, another horse and friends come and ride him. So we, I'm always going out with somebody. And, you know, the traffic's not too heavy. But when we, you know, we do get these big bulk lorries and arctics going past us and a lot of cyclists and people walking dogs and, you know, other horses, but generally speaking, he's very, very good. Very good. And how often do you ride him in a week? Probably two or three times. Um, 
usually maybe once in the field and twice hacking out, but, you know, hacking out is what he seems to like. He likes to get out of the field and, and go off and look, sort of look around him and, um, and the other horse enjoys that as well. So if we can get out, we do, yeah. Because he must be quite old now as well. He's 11, which in horse terms, especially these days, I think is still actually quite young. I mean, the other horse that I have is 27, and he's still going strong. You know, he he actually has a faster pace than Royal Empire, so we're all, always playing catch-up with him. <laughs> so we go back now to his racing career, uh, I had a look today, which you've no doubt done on many occasions, of his 2013 Melbourne Cup run, which um, featured a lot of famous British horses. And uh, second in that race was Red Cadeau, the uh, Ed Dunlop horse. Mount Athos, Luca Kamanis was third. Dandino for Marco Botti was fifth. And uh, the Tom Dascom trained Brown Panther was eighth. You must have watched the race a few times yourself. I have, yes, yes. Bearing in mind that Royal Empire had actually beaten Red Cadeau, hadn't he? Um, I, I think earlier or a couple of months before that. So it, it was very interesting. You know, he looked like he was making ground. I don't know what happened earlier on, whether he got held up a bit. But um, I, I, I think he probably could have done a bit better. <laughs> Yeah, you're right about beating Red Cadeau because he won the Jeffrey Freer Stakes in August uh, 2013 at Newbury, which was a Group 3 race. And that's a, quite a well-known race because it's been won by the likes of Ardross and recently Defoe. And um, in one of his other runs prior to the Melbourne Cup, he came second in the September Stakes uh, behind Prince Bishop. Um, that's a race that Enable only just recently won as well. That's right. You know, I think he had what fourteen runs with eleven placings. So you know, it was a it was a good career he had. You know, very yeah, good. Yeah, well, he's he's very he's very well bred, isn't he? His grandsire is Galileo, and his um, his sire Tiafio, um, who was the champion two year old in two thousand and six. That's right. Yeah, that, that's it. Very well bred bred horse. <laughs> and, and now he's in a, a little village in Norfolk. So it's a change yeah, from where he little, was, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. Little field. Well, he's got six acres and he has a companion, um, as I say, 20, 27-year-old. Uh, he has some uh, two mares next door. And hopefully he's a happy horse. You know, that's that's what I, you know, I'm, I'm really, that's the end result of this all. Hopefully he's happy. That's amazing. Yeah, well, he's obviously gone from being looked after by Saeed bin Sirur to Vicky Saul in uh, <laughs> Norfolk. So, uh, uh, but I'm That's sure right. you... I mean, he's not stable at all. He's not stable at all now. He's out, um, you know, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. He has a um, he's rugged and he has shelter, but he uh, he doesn't really like going in a stable now, and he keeps weight on and. He, you know, he, he seems, as I say, a happy horse. Well, that's very good to hear. Now, you're a racing fan as well. So prior to the uh, pandemic, uh, you, did you used to go racing as well? Yes, mainly to um, the local tracks, sort of Great Yarmouth, Fakenham, and occasionally to Newmarket. I have a great friend, Angela, and we go together and, um, yeah, really enjoy ourselves. <laughs> yeah, Angela was the mutual friend who introduced me to you, who we met uh, on the gallops those uh, three or four weeks ago, which was the um, the reason why we're doing this podcast. So we must thank Angela that, that, for that. that that's now, right. Now, on this show, we always ask people for their a few favourites. So I was going to ask you who your favourite horse is and why. Well, I think just because she's sort of in the news at the moment and she's such a wonder, it, it has to be Royal, um, sorry, um, Enable. You know, she's such a... A beautiful horse, and we went down to the gallops of oh, three or four times. We leave Wood Norton at about five o'clock where I live, and um, get to Newmarket at about half past six, mainly just to to see her. Although you know it's a lovely thing to do anyway. Um, but yeah, she's fantastic. So enable really. Yeah, I thought favorite. you'd try. 
trying to say that Royal Empire was your favourite horse there, and that's cheating, really. It's a can't no, use sure. him as your favourite horse. <laughs> <laughs> and what about your favourite jockey? Well, again, probably Frankie. I, um, a because he ha- obviously he's, he's ridden Royal Empire, and B because of his association with Nabel. So, but obviously yeah. he's not the. He, he obviously he's not the best jockey to have ever ridden Royal Empire. He's not, no. no but no. I think he won on him earlier on, didn't he? I think he he won one race on him. That's right. Frankie rode Royal Empire to victory at Kempton in August 2012. It was Royal Empire's second win in only his third race. Now, I was referring to the, the, the best jockey to have ridden Royal Empire was Vicky Sewell, but... Uh, Oh, Not yes. Frankie de Tory, but uh, you're a bit oh, slow with that one. But uh, one more favourite, Vicky. You said you liked going to the local tracks. Have you got a favourite race course and why? Um, probably Great Yarmouth. It's uh, such a well-maintained track, and it's um, you know it doesn't attract sort of too many people. You can get very close to the horses. Um, get a good sight of the, the track while they're racing. You get some very good horses and trainers there and, and jockeys, of course. Um, so that would have to be my favourite. Well, thank you very much, Vicky, for being on the paddock and the pavilion. And I hope you have many more years riding out on Royal Empire. And um, thank you very much again for being on the show. Well, thank you very much for having me. And um, as I say, Royal Empire has a permanent home and... You know, I love him and yeah, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you for listening to The Paddock and the Pavilion. You can download the show on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at The Pad and Pad. Sports Social Podcast Network. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.